25 past five now. Um, don't know if you listened to this this morning. Um, um, good morning, Ulster. A pensioner from Brashane called Rosemary Fee. Rosemary, who's 82 uh, and a widow and a cancer survivor, was speaking to our health correspondent, Mary Louise Connolly. She said that she wouldn't be alive if it wasn't for a network of health professionals supporting her to live at home. Well, without them, I don't think I would be alive. Because uh, Impact as well, they got me, I was concerned about the bathroom because it wasn't right and I was afraid of falling. So they got in touch with people and they come out and they put me up rails to use and sorted me out with the bathroom. Well, Rosemary has been supported by Impact Age Well, a non-government organisation that helps to bridge the gap between older people and things like GPs, health trusts and community services. Over the past six years, it has helped around 3,000 people to live at home and reduced hospital admissions. Currently, it's operating in just mid and east Antrim. And while it wants to expand, without additional funding from the Department of Health, its services may close in a year. Let's speak to Sarah McLaughlin, who is the Executive Director for Health um, for Impact Age Well. Um, look, great to have you, Sarah. I suppose, first of all, I mean, many of us may not have heard of, of this bridging of a gap done by the likes of yourself until you hear the story of someone like Rosemary Fee. Yep. Thank you for having me this evening. Um, Rosemary is one of our amazing service users who was um, happy enough to share her story. Um, in the hope of inspiring others to look for support. I suppose um, Rosemary's story is something that we hear every day. Um, older people who essentially don't know her, her, where to get support from um, and not sure who to speak to about certain things. Um, and quite often their GP is their first port of call. Um, but it might not be the GP that they actually need that particular help for. for, for. Um, it could be that they need help in something to do with their housing um, their finance, their long-term health condition, um, lots of other different reasons. And that's essentially what we exist, um, is to join the dots mm. between ourselves and the community and also the healthcare professionals. And that idea that you are just operating, operating in Mid and East Antrim, but uh, as Joel was saying there, around 3,000 people have been able to live at home because of the work you do, which reduces hospital admissions, which reduces pressure on the, on the healthcare system, which presumably saves saves the, the NHS money as well, you'd imagine. But that concern as well that um, those services may close in a year without additional funding. Yep, yeah, well, we were set up in 2017 and we were created out of um, Mid and East Under Age Well Partnership, which is an older person's charity. And at that time, we knew that older people were struggling with, with all of these different needs and we really wanted to um, bridge the gap, as you say, um, we also knew that there was lots of cost um, to the health service and we felt that we could impact on that. In the first three years of the project, we were able to show that we did an evaluation. We were able to show that we are actually able to avoid cost to the health service. So reducing visits to the GP or admissions to A&E. Um, and for the older person, it's, it really is a lifeline. Is there a um, figure on be... that, Sarah, in terms of a monetary yes. value? What is it? Yes, um, we're able to show in the first three years of the project, Joel, that um, for every pound invested in Impact Age, well, we're able to show a return of um, £2.38 in terms of unscheduled costs to the healthcare system here. So for every um, pound you spend, they save £2.38 effectively. Yeah. That's... yeah, effectively, yes. And it's all about that preventative idea of bringing you know, the care into the community so that we can start at an early stage with an older person before they reach that point of crisis. So if our officers are getting out to visit someone in their home, um, you know, at the start of their, their journey into potentially into social care, potentially into care, we can sort of help to keep them at home as independently as possible and help them to age well. Has there been a cliff age like this before, Sarah, in, in terms of a period when you thought you, you might be going to lose your funding and, and things might come to an end? Or, or is this the first time this has happened? Well, we were funded initially in the first three years by the Dunhill Medical Trust, which is a foundation in England. Um, they gave us a million pounds to basically try this concept. Um, so at the end of those three years, there was a bit of a, a cliff edge. But thankfully, at that time, um, the Department of Health were able to step in and say, no, we actually agree. We can see that you're saving money. So we're prepared to put the money up front and continue this project. Now, we've grown from working with six GP practices in Mid and East Antrim to working with all of them. And how, um, how, so how long did they commit for? Did they 
so whenever that's they stepped the in? Fi- the five the five year funding from twenty twenty. So we started just at the brink of COVID when things were absolutely horrific. Um and we've we've worked our way through and we've actually grown. Okay, so so you're reaching this point. When, when do you think the funding may may run out? What, what, so know. our fund our funding is secure until um, March of twenty five. Okay. Um. So the minute we're positioning ourselves, we're talking to the integrated care system that's that's starting off in Northern Ireland. We're showing and through the work that we've worked with them, um, the University of Birmingham in the last year, we've shown that this model is actually seen as a model of best practice because of those connections to the community, because of those asset based work, and we're showing that. If you come right back down to the community and ask older people what they really need, we can help healthcare care professionals to save those costs. So when you when you look at this, Sarah, <clears throat> when it comes to you know, the next time, and hopefully you, you'll be saying hopefully by that stage that there'll be a minister in place and, and you'll yes, be able to go exactly. and have, have a conversation again. Um, exactly. Are, are you going to go and, and say we really want the funding to keep on doing what we are doing or, or are you going to go and make a case to say, listen... We're getting all these calls, all all these uh, contacts from people outside of the area that we're currently in. Let, let's have a go at expanding this. Look at how much we can save you. Absolutely. Like our dream today alone, because of the coverage on BBC, I've had emails from other parts of the country looking for this kind of help. We want to be able to go to a new Minister for Health and say, we've proven this can save you money. We've proven the need is there. Our healthcare professionals stand alongside us. They need us. And we can provide this support, maybe not through our own organisation, but by working with other community development partnerships across Northern Ireland to make that unique approach to older people to ensure that everyone gets the opportunity to have this sort of support in their later life. Lovely. Well, listen, uh, thanks for taking time to speak to us, Sarah. We'll keep in touch, see how things go. That's uh, Sarah McLaughlin, who is Executive Director uh, for Health at Impact Age Well.